Greetings, Amy. This is Derek Burrell, and here's my final critique of your images for our 828 Creative Photography. Uh, thank you for taking the class here, and it's been fun looking at your images and watching them evolve. Hopefully you've gotten some, something from this class. But let's start looking at the photographs. And uh, what, you know, my first impression, I just see these little splashes of color here and there, which became important to you as we've discussed uh, through this process. And uh, so, you know, perhaps we should uh, get looking at the images. Um, you know, a good sense of composition and a nice splash of color here. And I think it works well. You know, the first ones that you, you posted in this style were almost, there's just like too much discord. The, there's just this one area that was so overtly saturated. It just kind of stuck out like a sore thumb and didn't resonate and didn't integrate into the overall photograph. And I think you've corrected that nicely here. Certainly this image shows you uh, that. And it creates, like if this were all just grayscale, it would be a weaker photograph. But it helps create this area of emphasis and breaks it up in interesting ways. So good job with that. As done here, you know, we have this uh, sort of... Uh, just a more subtle integration, you know, that, that, that color in here creates this area of emphasis and it does it, and it's, it's well balanced in the all, overall photograph. You know, there's this nice strong movement, movement here, diagonal, more diagonal, vertical up movement, cloud here, then this, uh, you know, bill of a hat or whatever it is. Grabs my attention and, and demands me to look. As these are too, you know, there's this nice soft. It's a good composition. Um, you know, you're using, I think, as you mentioned here, technically in your artist statement, you talk about using this more narrow depth of field where we put the sharp here, juxtaposed with the soft. And this image does that really well. And I think it does help that we have this little splash of color here to further emphasize and pull out these flowers, you know, because there's some really strong lines and forms and shapes in the background that could maybe distract me from seeing the foreground and the background. But the, the pink elements that you're including here really strongly put this in the foreground. And this is secondary consideration. And then it makes me see that, that sharp and soft uh, push and pull of those images. And it does give me, looking at these, this, this sense of place in this old market region and realm of uh, Oma. Um, what works is a very uh, strong saturation in this form, but what works is the strong contrast in the background to help complement that strong saturation. You don't need to really desaturate everything. It's more finding the balance of saturation with that image. And I can really see there's a nice, fine balance of this object and then a balance between the other objects. So it isn't just look at this, but it's looking at this in this environment here and considering it in that environment. And, uh, you know, the photograph there works, works very well. And here it works well, too. And, and you've really found that your stride in how to make that color that selective color work within the overall composition and not just be about that. I like how I look at these forms, these strong forms, all this vertical movement of these lines, of this paper crane. But there's this one here that, uh, that stands out, but it doesn't stand out so much that I, I, it distracts me from looking at everything. There's a very good balance in this, in this image between those things. And here I get some more uh, environments, and I almost look at these less about this, this place and more just about these individual compositions. But this object in particular, maybe we're seeing this, this pattern of pushing and pulling where I look at some details, but then I get a, a larger sense here. Because now I look at the, the sense of this city and I get a sense of street photography. And that's kind of in, you know, what we're talking about and what Cortez did well, um, you know, this idea of street photography. And where we're doing that street photography, where we're we finding that, and how it, it gets a sense of a place. And maybe that's what we're doing. We're getting this sense, and you want to give the sense of this, this old market downtownish, you know, part of Omaha specifically. What does that mean to someone who lives in Los Angeles or someone who lives in Kansas or someone that lives in Canada 
is there you know is there something um, in focusing on just this one part of Omaha that can resonate beyond that? And I think so. You know, I think there are. There's a you know, there's such a good composition. There's not there's not something you know, like this is could be sort of a every city scene. Um, and but your use of just uh, focusing on the color here and then the strong uh, shape in the foreground and then the sharpness of this versus the softness of, of that negative space in the rest of the city, you know, I think can uh, certainly resonate, you know. And then again, another nice use of a narrow depth of field, and then also a somewhat softer yellow here that that juxtaposes well with the the values and textures that surround it. No, it's not just that one color area that I look at in this photograph. I do consider the whole image. You do this well. Um, this image is a very strong saturation, and this form does sort of dominate the image, but the background does support it. You know, there's not just this thing. I don't completely ignore what's going on because I like how this form is similar to the head here, and this strong line between the contrast and mid-tone and the darkness and the balance of this between that. And then it all, of course, brings me back to this form in the foreground. And this form is probably not something you're going to find in every city like the previous image, you know, or I guess it's going back to this, uh, utilizing the, the meter uh, to regulate how long people stay in places and keep traffic moving, keep people moving and cars moving. Um, you know, that's a bit more every. This is a bit more um, specific to Omaha and perhaps that old market area. You know, and here we have a nice um, you know, sort of diner feel. And I like how you chose the tops of the seats and the reds. And then everything moves to this one point perspective. You know, this moves me here, this moves me here, the counter moves me here, the ceiling moves me here, uh, the floor moves me there, but and, and the seat tops also move me there. To that one point perspective and then you have this color and the emphasis down here but it doesn't take away it kind of adds to the image so you've really found a sweet spot in, in your ability to to select color very well as to which ones we emphasize, emphasize and then how saturated they are here you have this little bit of green this little bit of red this little bit of blue and the triangular element they feel works within the, the triangular composition and movement of everything uh, almost to, to this point, you know, that everything is supporting that and moving me to that. And it works very well. And I, I look at these images as in, in new. Are you doing something new? Are you approaching street photography in a sort of new way? And this ability to so easily select uh, a color um, and, and isolate it from everything else is, you know, much more challenging historically to do that, perhaps one would have to you know, print a black and white photograph and then they could watercolor certain color areas. That's you know been done, so it's not necessarily this new new idea. It's easier to do now, and to me that is one of the big questions about digital photography. It does make it easier. It does bring more people not only into the photographic process but also in the editing process. Photoshop and all these new online editors. Make it easier for all sorts of people to do that. And I guess that becomes the, the challenge. And the question is, with all these new people doing it, it raises the level of, and it makes me think about, what are these images about? How are they different? Do we, It's more easy to push these ideas and this aesthetic, but what does that aesthetic mean? You know, this is a nice photograph. And this this uh, surrogate human form made out of these uh, parts. Uh, becomes kind of fun and uh, you know sort of uh, looking for that term for the, the aesthetic um, uh, oh, whatever um, you know, something uh, punk um, it'll come to me later but you know so we have that aesthetic and use of color but you know what new are you bringing? How are you changing it? You know, are you raising the bar for the next person? Are you giving me something new conceptually or technically? Or you're, you're doing this very well. And I guess that's maybe the next step you need to think about. You've got this down. You've got a really nice balance. Again, a nice balance in, in the selective elements you choose to have saturation. And utilizing the grayscale of that environment to help support that. And they're strong. You know, there's a strong visual movement between this and this and this and this. 
And it's like a modernist sense, but you're integrating this, this, these selective color elements, color elements into this more modernist photograph. And that's not necessarily new. How are we pushing it further? Is it more about the local? You know, are you trying to speak locally about this? Has, has someone ever done this sort of aesthetic to the Omaha market area? And, um, or are you doing it better than anyone else has done before? You're doing it really well. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you that. You're doing it really well. How does this push art? You know, and I have to take a step back and look at the big picture, the big picture of art photography, the big picture of art, art. And are we uh, doing something new? Uh, because me, to me, art is doing something new. And that art can, ha art can happen at different levels. It can happen at a personal level. Maybe this is new for you. It can happen a, as a community level. It can happen at a state regional level. It can happen at a national or international level. And that's when you really are pushing art in a new way. So I look at the art degrees here. Perhaps this is just pushing you or pushing the local community and looking in a different way. But my consideration is always as an art teacher, art, general, big picture, big culture. Are we doing something new? You're just doing something really well here. This is a great photograph. I like this uh, arrow and how it's juxtaposed in this uh, gray and then the lines that move out here, the diagonals, really strong diagonal lines. Nice contrast, and then this form moving me. I love how it moves me to this wall, you know, boom. There's something metaphorical there. This photograph could be a metaphor for many things. It's interesting in and of itself as a singular image. And then thinking back, you know, this is also, I think, a very successful photograph. You do a very good job formally of balancing the, the saturation and the desaturation. And then, of course, the shapes of those things. But what does it all mean? What is it challenge? What is it about in that larger photographic sense, in that large art sense? What are you giving me that's new? Now, you're not the only person to ask those questions of. I think most people, most students I look at, even graduate or undergraduate students, that becomes a thing. There's that art in you discovering for yourself things. But we always want to push it further. And, you know, we have this ease of access uh, to these tools. Now we have to push something even farther. Nice photograph. Nice photo. I love this photograph. So I'm glad you included that. I think they fit there. The one thing I think you should maybe reconsider is um, how you integrate these images of water with them because there does seem to be a dichotomy uh, in the images. I mean, this image kind of moves me from this to the water elements. I'd be curious to see if um, putting the water elements within these would, would work or not, or maybe they are two separate bodies of work. I don't know. The water photographs are beautiful and interesting. And I think in some ways for me, um, they do push something newer than the other images. And I'm more engaged with these images. I love this photograph. It is beautiful. It is doing something new. It is, you know, I often talk about the new landscape photography thing. I've recently joined this group on Facebook and looking at their images. And I, my question for them is, are they doing anything new that the new topographics did? Is it, or is it just a building off the new topographics? By a portfolio of work which happened in the early 1970s, which kind of gave us a look of, of trying to understand how humanity is integrated into this ecology. And that's what this image demands of me, is considering the sky. I love how I get this perfect sky reflection here, and then it's distorted, and even further distorted. As I move down this thing, it becomes less and less recognizable as a reflection of the sky and I become more looking at just as water. That there's this push and pull in this image and there's this human element in here and this natural element in here and more human, human elements and the further abstraction is natural elements. And this photograph, I think, is one thing that does something that speaks to me. Bam, I love this photograph. And it asks new things of me or maybe some older considerations in new ways, you know. Um, are we making progress? Are we doing any better with our landscape than they were doing in the 1970s when pollution was so bad that people in this country were protesting their air quality, protesting their wa water quality, so much so that President Nixon, Republican Nixon, creates the EPA at the demand of the people. 
Ah, now I'm getting some bigger ideas. This is interesting for me. But I am an environmental person. I am a landscape photographer, an environmentalist, a person who thinks and reads about these ideas. And these images really connect to me. And maybe that's just me personally. Maybe someone else will connect more uh, to those other images. <laughs> well, and they're beautiful photographs. Such a nice use of color and light and reflection and reflection of you know the surface of the water, but also how that water reflects light down on this other human constructed element. And I see these little bit of trees and see this interaction of, of, of humans utilizing nature and reorganizing it as their own sort of abstract landscape architecture sort of experimentation. You know, and then this is a nice photograph of water and splashing and surface and light reflecting off of it. And, you know, you're really focusing in on something here. And this, again, to me, this is like a new landscape photography image. Damn, I love the light. I love the water. I love how nature is finding its place within this human construction of all of these things. Yeah, to me, there's something here to really be considered and thought about and engaged with. More so than just composition and textures and lights, which... I guess some of those earlier images fall. I'm so much more engaged with these. I don't know if there's a interaction between these two, you know. I think about these images so differently, but maybe it's just more personal for me because of, of my own thoughts and my own interests and, and, and my own concerns. So maybe someone else would be would react to these differently, and that's of course the weakness. I've talked about many of these videos that made maybe today specifically, the weakness of this asynchronous format is I can't ask those questions of people and get some immediate feedback um, on them. And I'd be curious to see what other people say. And unfortunately, I'm sorry to say, I, I don't see other people uh, responding to your work, and I don't know why that is. You know, should, everyone should have at least two, but, you know, it's difficult to create something where Everyone gets the, the feedback that I think that they deserve. So I don't know what to say about that. I love this photograph. I'm questioning where the water is coming from, but you abstract it so well. I do think these images are stronger, more interesting, and more conceptual than what's going on up here. These are more interesting aesthetic play that's going on and what you're engaged with. And, you know, I see a difference here between these and then these images. And I'm more engaged with these images. I find more meaning and content and ideas and thoughts in them. Honestly, I think you should be searching for some places to share these images further because they're worthy of it. They ask interesting questions of it. So that's my... Um, these, these to me could be more of a commercial thing that could uh, be featured at a you know, a shop downtown in that old market thing, you know, little postcards or images that people could buy. That, to me, feels what those are. And that feels uh, commercial. And commercial is not necessarily bad. But I'm more concerned with the deep meaning of what these images say uh, to us culturally, art-wise. I find a lot of value in those philosophically. And to me, the philosophy is a higher consideration than commercial concerns. Anyways, Amy... Um, those are some of my thoughts and the images. Take them for what they are. I hope you find some value in them. I hope you have found some value in this class. Um, if you have any questions or concerns, please let me know and share those.